A new comet is discovered by a Chinese observatory and is uh, potentially can be a great comet bright enough to be seen by the naked eye. Su Chin Chan uh, Atlas um, Comet or C 2023 A3 is a comet discovered first by Chinese astronomers in observatory, which reminds me of the Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles, the structures and the shape of the buildings and the popularity of the site reminds me of that to promote astronomy, it seems. The comet will probably will be bright enough to be seen in the western sky and uh, partly in the eastern sky also. Uh, from the uh, late August to uh, almost December, when it passes, its best will be from the late September to the early October. Uh, I have a simulation of it, and you can see that. I commented at the center, it doesn't move. You can see the sun is there, so practically during the closest approach, it will not be visible, it will be in the glare of the sun, but it moves quickly from the down sky toward the evening sky in the October. As you can see here, the comet approaches the sun, then from the other side, that means during the uh, um, sunset, after the sunset, you, it will be visible again. So we have a chance to see it on that time, but this best. And uh, from the uh, look at the constellations, as you can see that constellations don't show the sun, that's misleading. When you have to, rem uh, looking at this diagram, you have to remember the sun is there. And in the sun, during daylight, it's very difficult to see the comet, it's very bright, the sun brighter than anything, any other object. So uh, consider it as a dawn or dusk comet. It's not uh, like a hail bop or the Hyakotake visible uh, during the night, long hours. It will be at its best 27, closest to the sun, 27th of September, uh, around 50 million kilometers. Then by the 12th of October, it will be 70 million kilometers from the Earth. Uh, it will be, in a way, similar to Comet New Wise. We saw it during the COVID pandemic, and it uh, it was a bright sight. You could easily see it from the bedroom of a window. I have my video about that, and I put it at the end of this. It's not like Comet Hyokotake or Hailbub, which were visible in the zenith, near the zenith, all the night. Uh, in the astrology of the past cultures, for example, in the Iranian the manuscripts, there are, there are predictions associated with this cause and effect. It's not scientific. It's just based on cause and effect. They say that if the comet uh, appears in the Virgo, which is this comet, uh, if it's facing toward the West, it will be the decline of the governments. And we know that the U.S. elections will be uh, happening in that time. Also, will be in the West side for the Iran, that is Iraq and others, for the rest of the world, means West side, will be some fight. We know that uh, there is also... This comet is associated with the decline of the Anglo-Saxon government by the Vikings, who were actually descendants or ancestors of the Russians, which way you want to see it. Historically, that can be true because we have seen whenever the, you know, France, for example, attacked Russia, the Russians came back like a tide and take over all the France and Europe. The same with the Germans. Russia took most of the Europe, Central Europe. Uh, this situation for the moon will be like this. You maybe see the crescent of the moon during that. There will be a solar eclipse visible from America, not from the Europe, but that is uh, uh, visible from those regions. If you're in America, Mexico, North America, you will have a chance to see the total solar eclipse. So let's hope for the best and uh, hoping that this will be visible for all of us. We will have a summer, Indian summer, as we call it in the UK. And rest of the world will have also clear and nice. We can see this, hopefully, without obstruction, without any problem. This will be a sight for us, no matter what the astrologers of the past says. We are astronomers. We don't do those kind of, you know, pseudoscience. You can see the comet, new voice. It's just above the tree. Oh, I see. Yeah, with its tail. Yeah, you see the tail? Yeah. I can see it also in the center of this camera, although yeah. it is not very... Uh, yeah, I see it. I this see is the it. only comet I think people can see from the window of the bedroom. Mm. <laughs>
Isn't it exciting? That will not come back until 6,000 years later. Uh, the Earth gravity actually is changing its orbit from 4,000 to 6,000 years. And we are in the bedroom. This is our bedroom window. <laughs> I hope you remember when you wake up again in the morning that you have seen the comet Newweiss. That's the only comet people can see from the window of the bedroom. Mm. And God willing, who knows, maybe we will be, we will be revived <laughs> if they don't burn us. <laughs> Yeah, now it is 6,000. 4,000 was before coming close to Earth. 23rd of the July will be the closest to Earth. People say when the comet comes in that direction of North East, people will start disobedience. They will not obey their rulers. <laughs> no, it depends. If you're a, if you're a law-abiding citizen, yeah. Okay, here, that's the center. Yeah, comet is there, but you see at the center, the smudge which it doesn't move, dead center, and the tail of it is upward. And the star there is Capella, the brightest star which is now at the center. And uh, the actual comet itself is in the uh, north of the Gemini twin. And uh, that means duality, duality of leadership, duality of everything. Also, the direction of northeast shows that the, the tail of it is from the southeast toward the northeast. Northeast is that direction. So the tail of it is from southeast, southwest. That means mighty armies are coming from that direction. If you live in America, um, that can be in Texas and Louisiana, even Mexico, from that direction toward the north east, those original 13 states, including Washington, D.C. and New York. This comet has a lot of prophecies in it, according to the ancient Babylonian texts. As I mentioned, the comet is visible, the comet Newweiss is visible from our bedroom window. And I photograph it from our bedroom window also. Zero point eight second, and uh, ISO was, I think, 1,600, something like that, or 3,200. And these are some of the photos I was able to take from the bedroom. I just put a tripod there and uh, took the picture. This is the head of the car. The details are invisible and this is amazing. And um, you can see more details when, um, in this video, you see it a little bit overexposed. But in the actual photograph, they're really nice and visible. Beautiful, beautiful comment. <laughs> Just from the window of my bedroom. Of our bedroom. 6,000 years later, probably we will see this again. And this is the comet again from um, ISO, a little bit different, and the exposure one second. And a little bit more structure in the, t in the head and uh, some parts of the tail.
Okay, tonight it was a little bit clear compared to last night, which was really foggy. And I was able actually to go and set up a small telescope. I didn't want to take a big heavy one. So I went and put this uh, telescope, it's an Optic Star AR90S. Uh, uh, 90 millimeter refractor is a short tube refractor. I use the Zeiss microscope eyepiece, is a PL um, uh, 10, I think, 20 dash 20, and this is equal to 25 millimeter and 57 degrees field of view. Is comparing this with the panoptic, uh, I've seen people comparing the, the view with the panoptic 24 millimeter 68 degrees, really good eyepiece one-sixth of the price of it. So I watched the comments of ZTF. This is near the Hyades in the Taurus, um, close by to the Aldebaran and Sigma Tauri. Of course, it's moving. The situation is moving. I hold the camera. It's a Huawei P1030 Pro mobile phone. Against the eyepiece, nothing else. And I was able to, able to catch it. The mount is a flex tube. Uh, uh, it's called Watcher Flex Tube 130, Dapsonian tabletop mount, white one. So my estimate of the magnitude of the comet is around magnitude 7. The online data says it's magnitude 7.1, so close enough. In good seeing conditions, you can actually see the fan-shaped tail of, of the comet easy. It was a little foggy and wet tonight, but I could see the tail clearly. Also turned the telescope towards the Great Orion Nebula, Messier 42 or M42, and I was able to capture this. I'm really happy. One of the best views I've ever had with uh, any camera, uh, a mobile phone camera, with this uh, telescope. Really nice wide field of view, really everything visible. Of course, uh, very wide camera means that you will have also some distortion slide. And also a little bit discoloration because this telescope is not a uh, apochromatic. And that's the reason we had some purple fringing, a little bit blue light. You know, this is this doesn't claim that it is apochromatic. It's an achromat, it's cheap, but it's very versatile and I'm really happy to have it.